Okay, hello bio, this is Mr. B, and we're going to finish chapter 11 here, and this is going to end on what is known as linkage in gene maps. So what linkage is going to be is going to be actually an idea that kind of goes against something that we might have, dis that, not that we might have discussed, that we did discuss earlier about independent assortment. So we're going to see there's kind of a phenomenon that goes on that somewhat goes against independent assortment, but not really. And then gene maps are going to be ways that we actually map out genes. So let's go ahead and get started here with our question is what structures actually what structures actually assort independently? Remember assort, we kind of said that that meant separate and independently is by themselves. So we said genes really weren't connected to one another at all, that they're just going to separate on their own no matter what. However, a concept of gene linkage came up. So this came up by a guy by the name of Thomas Hunt Morgan's research on fruit flies and it led him to the principle of linkage. And Morgan discovered that many of more than 50 fruit fly genes he had identified appeared to be linked together. So and they seemed to violate the principle of independent assortment. So what he kind of looked at is that, well, if this fly has red eyes, it almost always has normal wings. To whereas if this fly has gray eyes, it almost normally has what they call dumpy wings, is what they say. So wings that aren't fully developed. So did, were these genes in fact linked together and violate the, the principle of independent assortment that Mendel came up with? So Morgan and his associates, they grouped these linked genes into what were known as four linkage groups. And each linkage group assorted independently, but all the genes in one group were inherited together. So what it meant was that inside this fruit fly, there was four distinct groups of genes, and these distinct groups all separated on their own, but the actual individual genes and the one group were all inherited together. So the splitting did occur, but there were some genes that were so close to one another that they were always passed on together. And then it says each chromosome is actually a group of linked genes. And so Morgan concluded that Mendel's principle of independent assortment still holds true, and this was because that the chromosomes, they assorted independently, not our individual genes. So up to this point, we said that all the genes were inherited or were, were separated or assorted independently. But we know that now not to be true because of this work done by Morgan. He noticed that a lot of them were inherited together similarly. But this was because that they were all so close together that you could actually map out the distances between the two, which we're going to get to in a second. So since they were so close together, they did not split up during this process called crossing over. And then another kind of uh, breakthrough again, mentioned the distance between our genes were called gene maps. And then how gene maps are explained is that crossing over during meiosis sometimes separates genes that had been on the same chromosomes onto homologous chromosomes. So sometimes we start, again, remember we look back at that picture in the brown and the purple chromosomes. Originally they were all their own, but then a piece of the brown went to the purple and a piece of the purple went to the brown. So those, that information used to all be on one chromosome. Now they're on homologous chromosomes. It's paired chromosome. And crossover events occasionally separate and exchange linked genes and produce new combinations of alleles. So that crossing over them switching separates and exchange linked genes and produces new combinations of alleles. And then Alfred Sturtevant, he was a student of Morgan. He reasoned that the farther apart two genes were, the more likely they were to be separated by a crossover in meiosis. So that just makes sense. The ones that are closer together are most likely always going to be inherited together, to whereas the ones that are separated, they're farther apart. When they break off, they're more likely to be changed. And then they said recombination frequencies, and that's just a fancy way of saying how often they'll kind of come back together can be used to determine the distance between genes. But we won't get into that. We'll just need to know that there are certain genes that are certain distances away from each other on the chromosome. So we can actually look at a chromosome, and we can tell where the location of the genes actually are. And then he created a gene map showing the relative locations of each known gene on one of the Drosophila, again, that's fruit fly chromosomes. And if two genes are close together, the recombination frequency between them should be low. Again, they're not going to always, they're not ever going to separate. So how could they come back together? Since crossovers are rare, and then if they are far, be, if they are far apart, recombination rates between them should be high. And then uh, that's 
pretty much the end of it. Just has some pictures of what a gene map might actually look like. As you can see, we have on our right, we have the location on the chromosome, and then we can see that these our first two traits here, no bristles on antenna and dumpy wing, those are our first two traits. Those are really close together, so those are always going to be, or not always, but let's say a majority of the time those are going to be inherited together because they're so close to whereas no bristles on antenna and bent wings are most likely always going to be crossed over and they might be uh, so they would be a subject to recombination basically they would break apart and then come together since they are so far apart and again here's just another gene map but we won't get too far into that so it's almost a little bit beyond what we want to go for. I would just say the most important part is knowing that the genes have different locations on chromosomes and that the farther they are apart, the more likely they are that they'll actually recombinate. <clears throat> they'll have, again, higher rates to be, uh, to be subject to recombination. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions.